Now that we've got our casing all attached and all kinds of other stuff going on, the next step is going to be to attach the bottom to our bag. So our bag is finally about to go from being a big circle donut type thing to uh, having a real bag-like shape. It's going to have a bottom, which is exciting. So to start out for this, you're going to need your bag bottom piece as well as the bag body that you've been working on and some pins and some snips. Um, because we're going to start out by pinning this and we're actually going to need to do some clipping to make it all work. Uh, because we're pinning some round things and that, those are hard to sew. So to start out, we're going to flip your bag inside out. And this is so that when we put our bottom in there, we can line up the right sides together without worrying about um, how it's all fitting. Now the nice thing on your bag pieces is that you've got the centers marked on these two sides. Um, on mine, I don't have the centers marked on the long side, so I'm going to use our handy dandy little trick of folding it over, and then I'm going to mark in there. I can also use a pin if I wanted, but um, I like the marks better just because I'm already going to be putting pins in. I don't want to add anything extra uh, that is not going to help me figure out where the center is. So, oh yep, okay, that one's in the right spot. Do the next one. There we go. Okay, so now I've got the centers marked on all my bag chunks. You're going to want this for sure marked before you start going because we're doing the age-old tradition of matching up our centers. So you need to get your bag with all the straps stuffed inside and not poking through uh, with the bottom up towards you. And then what you're going to do is you're going to match up the centers of your pieces. I'm liking to start with the long edges. I think that'll be easiest. Um, and you want to match the tick mark notches that you've got there, and then you're gonna pin through them. That is not a pin. Yes, so you'll see uh, my pin goes in through one and out through the other, um, and I'm gonna do that on all four of these. Um, and I'm actually gonna need to mark my side one, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing where I fold it in half, grab my pen, give it a little mark, And I'm going to do it over here too, just to have it out of the way. Lining up side seams and marking it. There we go. Okay. So now I've got good marks for all of where my bag needs to line up. Um, I'm going to do the other long side next. And this is the side with less things attached to it. So it feels a little less bulky. And um, you're going to want to keep all of your pins on the bag bottom side of things as opposed to on the uh, top. And I'll show you what I mean in one second as soon as I get this pin through. So I'm going to put all my pins on this side rather than starting them on this outside part because it's just going to save me time when I'm going through the sewing machine. Um, not trying to worry about where the pins were, if I'm going to run over them, because you can only have one of these sides facing up. So sticking with one consistently of where you're going to have stuff facing up is the way to go. Okay, and that's got those centers matched. I'm doing the short ends now of matching centers. And you'll notice if I get a little bit off on one, I just try it again. Scooch it over in there and then I pin it. Okay, so I've got my centers pinned and marked all the way around. Now I'm going to begin the business of actually pinning it uh, the rest of the way. Because right now, if I went to go sew this, I would have a lot of, like, loose chunk. I mean, everything that's not directly marked would be kind of loose on me, which would be really difficult to deal with. So um, I'm going to go through and pin through my stitch line. I'm doing these pins uh, horizontal, so they're matching the stitch line, actually. Uh, whereas I had my marking ones vertically uh, compared to the stitch line. I find this personally is just easier to sew with because um, they're just, they're ready for me to pull them out. And they're also like covering more marking round than like this one point of contact that's being held by the ones I'm using for marking. 
That is not to say this is the only way to pin or the right way to pin in every scenario. This is just the way I'm doing it for this particular part of this particular thing. Yep. And so constantly be flipping back and forth to check to see if your bag seam or your stitch line is like lining up. Because otherwise your bag will come out mal shaped. Yep. Okay, and so now that I've got one full side done, I'm gonna show you what we do when we get to the corners. So this is the part that you're gonna need some scissors for. Um, you can use snips for this. My snips are incredibly dull, so I'm using my fabric scissors, but with a delicate hand. So you'll notice when we get to this corner, it's a little bit difficult to stitch in, or it's a little dif difficult to pin in even, because we've got a corner that's flat with a curve that is not uh, going into it. So the trick to doing this is we're going to or take tiny little cuts. Uh, you don't want to go past a quarter of an inch again in seam allowance. Uh, this is just like what we were doing with clipping and grading, except for instead of the V cuts, we're doing just little snippets. So I'm just using my scissors and this is going to allow the fabric to uh, spread out and more evenly fit into the space that we're trying to force it into. Um, so now, yes, now it's way more, it, it's much more easily able to lay flat like I want it to in this bag bottom. So now I can go about pinning the corner. And like I said, this is because we are putting a curved corner into a not curved space, um, which is a thing that you do and is a thing that is good practice to have because this is not the only time you're gonna encounter this in the world of sewing go. Yes, so you'll see my corners now lie really nice and flat. I mean, this is going to serve me well when it comes time to turn it out. So now I'm going to repeat this process on each of the corners. If you're feeling good about starting, you can feel free to um, skip forward to the title screen that says stitching the bottom of your bag on. If you'd like to watch me do the rest of them, I will be here doing them. So if you're going to skip, do it now. And if you've decided to join me for a special bonus round of clipping the corners, uh, congratulations. You don't get any extra points or anything, but I'm proud of you. Regardless. I'm actually, you know, I'm excited no matter what. You guys are all doing so good. You're making bags. And that's, that's so cool. Yeah, so I'm going to keep pinning this. Um, the short edges, you'll notice, they, they go really fast. I'm like, I got two pins in this whole edge. And that's all I really need. During these bits where I'm just like doing a repetitive task. Uh, demonstrating and like not needing to continue to explain I definitely get to the point where I'm like I should ask everybody how they're doing as if you guys could like respond um, I'm like oh you know any good jokes no that doesn't that doesn't work here He's, this is the only person you're gonna get to small talk with is you dummy Oof. luckily for me I do know many jokes so it's always a good time to be sitting in my house making videos of me sewing. Yeah, there we go. That one's laying out nice and flat now too. Let me stick one more pin in it. It's really interesting. I can tell between these pieces, uh, I think it was the bag body pieces, is when I got annoyed with the marking chalk that I was using and uh, switched to pencil. And so I was used to this red wax line I was seeing over on the other side, and on this side it's just it's pencil because I did switch halfway through. Because marking on red striped fabric with a red striped pen, red striping pen, is just it just doesn't show up as well as you'd think. Surprisingly enough, it doesn't work super great. So once again, if you're watching for the tutorial and not just for my like really exciting conversation with myself, um, you're going to slit clip these corners. I'm doing about four clips around each, uh, kind of like one on the part where it's going into it, so like here-ish, um, and then two in the main curve part, and then one more as it's going out of it. But there's no, there's no hard and fast rule so long as you're not extending past a quarter inch. Um, and if you, like me, are using fabric scissors on this, you just gotta be careful not to, like, slash through the main fabric of your bag, because you you got more clipping power than you'd really need in this task. There we 
go. Yes. Very nice. We're almost done with this. And then we're gonna take it over to our sewing machine um, and we're going to put the bo bottom of our bag on. And you're gonna be so delighted because it's gonna be like really bag shaped, which is a bold, fresh development. Yeah, one more pin. And there we go. So this is what your pinned on bag bottom looks like. It's got the marking points Ooh, the camera's focusing the marking points and then the a ring of pins around. Um, and now we're going to take it over to our machine. So here we are over at the sewing machine, um, getting ready to put our bag bottom on. And I like to start with these. I prefer to start in the center of the uh, one of the long edges. I think it just gives you a good running start. Um, and this time we're finally going to do it. We're going to sew on the marked stitch line. I know you've all been waiting uh, and anticipating the day that you get to do that. And today's that day. Um, after so many times of basting things into the seam allowance, you at last get to uh, sew on your seam line that you mark so carefully. And we're coming up on our first corner. So what I'm doing when I sew the corners is I'm getting my hand up in the bag, actually my left hand, uh, and I'm just making sure that everything is smooth going into this. Because the key to good sewing is that everything, you need to keep it all as flat as you can when you're sewing. Um, otherwise, you're going to get bubbles and your bag is going to, uh, it's going to look like you have bubbles in it, it's, it. Which is not a thing you want. Um, and so, you've got to be feeling constantly with what the bottom fabric is doing. Because you can see the top fabric is fine. It's the bottom fabric that's going to get ridgy on you. Um, which is not what we want. So just taking it slow around the corners is gonna help you a lot. Making sure everything is laying as flat as it can. There we go, we've made it around corner number one. I don't actually know at all how racing commentary works, otherwise I would definitely do a fun little bit about that. of like, oh, coming into the third corner is Abby and she's zipping along, except she, what's this? She stopped to adjust again. The fabric is, needs to be flat. She's never gonna win the race at this point, but like I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a NASCAR, so uh, can't really can't really confidently sell that joke. Hopefully, you all liked it anyway. I I hope that everybody is is just at home enjoying this video. There we go. And I didn't specify earlier, but this is a uh, regular, good old fashioned normal stitch with a like two and a half to three length. And I'm back stitching, beginning at the end, but obviously not right now because this is neither of those times. And there we go, we've made it back to the start. I came in fifth place in this made up race. There we go. 
So now our bag bottom is stitched on all the way around. Um, and now I'm going to take it over to the ironing board and I'll show you what to do next, which is the last step of putting on the bottom of your bag. Now that we've got our bag bottom all stitched, um, we're going to be pressing it. Though before I even bother pressing it, I do know that I want to clip my curves a little bit more. So I've got the interior curves clipped, but I want to take some little V's out of the exterior sides too, like we did earlier. Um, so just whoop like that. Maybe one there. I'm gonna do that on all the corners. Um, and I'm not, I'm not doing this on the bag bottom piece, I'm doing it on the uh, bag body chunks. The bag bottom piece has already got its clips. There we go. So that's enough for now. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring out the seam roll again, um, just like we used before on the flap, uh, but we're going to be using it inside the bag now, and we're going to use it to press our seams open. So this is just like our regular pressing routine. We want the seams to be open and lying flat, because that's going to give us the best, smoothest interior possible. These will all be covered in lining, um, eventually, but you do want it to be able to lay flat within the lining. If this was something that I wasn't doing lining on, I would want to finish my seams another way. Um, some of the options for that would include either using pinking shears, serging is my personal favorite, um, French seams would have been an option if I was going for a bag with no lining. Um, all in all, the lining just makes more sense in this project, but those are some options if you don't want uh, raw edges in your that you're making and you don't want to do a whole lining. So I'm using my seam roll just as I did before to get the, in the corners um, and then I'm using the flat side of it to oops, press the seams open the sides of the corners. And the nice thing is that is because our seams are able to lie open within this, since they're not going to something like the flap where it is a flat two-dimensional thing, uh, we're pressing the seams open doesn't do anything. We don't have to grade these seams like we did with the other ones. Um, we've already done all the clipping we need to do, which is nice. Saves a bit of time. And gotta get in this corner. Um, I can also demonstrate this for you in person when we get into class because I, I recognize that my pressing video ability to show stuff in a pressing video is, is somewhat limited because it's kind of hard to see what's going on. So I can always live demo this with the pressing roll if you're confused about what's going on and why I'm using it and where it is on the inside of my bag. There's that. All right. So I've got my seams pressed open all the way around. Now I'm ready to flip the bag and in a magical reveal moment, I've got a bag with a bottom. Sure, it's still missing a couple things, but it's got a bottom. I could put things in it now, which is, I don't, this is the part that I get excited about. I'm like, man, look at that. You guys almost have a whole bag. Um, so this is what your bag should look like at this point. Uh, you got the bottom here. And I am going to put my seam roll in and press it uh, one more time from this direction. But I'm not going to show you that because it is going to be the exact same as what I just did. Um, it's like the, th the, the last step of our three-way pressing, but it's with a, an object with more than two pieces. Um, so I'm just going to press from this side, get all my seams really nice and crisp. But yeah, 
that is all you need for putting your bag bottom on.